Hey everyone, the actual video will start just in a couple of minutes after this intro. Feel free to skip ahead if you don't want to watch it, but I highly encourage you to watch it because there's an important message that I want to share with you. This video is an examination of a video from Lenny Sly of The Rogue Warriors. Now what many of you do not know is that actually me and Lenny Sly, we know each other personally. A couple of weeks ago I published a few different videos examining other general types of Aikido videos and I got a lot of backlash from the Aikido world because of it. Many people were choosing sides or blaming me for choosing sides and a lot of people expressed their hatred towards me personally. Before publishing this video I actually contacted Lenny Sly and I let him know that I'm actually having some hesitations about publishing it because I didn't want to hurt our relationship that we have. When he heard about my doubts, he said publish it for sure. He said that I should publish it without any hesitation at all. I always respect Lenny Sly, but for that I respect him even way more. Later we also discussed that while we disagree with each other on some points and that we're walking different paths, we still respect each other and we have each other's backs. That's because we're doing what we're doing not to please others. That's because we're doing what we're doing not because we want some other people's opinions or that we want to be liked. We're both searching for truth in our ways and we respect that about each other. And we're not about choosing sides or taking things personally or blaming each other. We're both interested in growing and learning and again we're both interested in truth that's what I encourage all of you to do as well to not take things personally but to look at the arguments specifically made to not blame others and to not choose sides and to try to find your own truth while respecting each other that's what's being a true martial artist is about if me and Lenny can do that with each other I'm sure he can do it too now with that said I let you watch the video yeah, let's go to the other video because there was something really interesting in that one. The pressure testing because yes. um, yeah. I, I, you know, I saw the title of this one. It was like pressure testing Aikido. Great. Let's see right. it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, put, I'll chip in a few words. So we know each other personally. So Lenny's like, he works as a bouncer. I respect him as an individual because he, from what I know him personally, he's really passionate about making Aikido work. Yeah, right, let's watch it. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about this guy, and he may be super skilled. The, the, the video is called Pressure Testing Aikido, and I wanted to see him pressure testing Aikido, which to me, pressure testing means I'm going to attempt to do something, and you're going to try to give me resistance so I'm not successful. That, to me, that's what pressure testing is. And because the thing is, many people were criticizing him that he's not, especially like jiu-jitsu people and functional martial artists, they would criticize him, you're not pressure testing. Where's the pressure testing? Well, I get to the part where they're doing the technique. Yeah. So it's not pressure testing as much as he's showing us a technique. And so I didn't, and that's all that happens in the video. And so the, the, what I call the feeder steps with the punch and stops. Right. And then the other guy does all this stuff. And so it's not pressure testing. What's, what's interesting to me is that uh, I did uh, Jeet Kune Do back in the 80s and 90s. They would do a range of stuff called trapping, which was kind of Wing Chun based. And right. this is... 100% 1980s and 90s Jeet Kune Do. This is exactly what they did. And they had this range called trapping. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the trapping range was, it was a little further out than clinch range, uh, but a little closer than boxing range. Mm -hmm. And so it was this space where our arms could entangle and we could hit each other. And that's what this is. In the Jeet Kune Do world, there was a ton of time and energy spent on trapping range. And as soon as the UFC came out, they realized that trapping range does not exist because it's this, what they call trapping range is a brief moment in time where people will actually grab. Mm. And so um, as soon as people um, started grabbing each other, trapping range completely disappeared. Mm -hmm. It's not trained in MMA because it doesn't exist. <laughs> and then so uh, that's what I see here from, from my background in Jeet Kune Do is I'm like, mm. there's 90s Jeet Kune Do right there, um, trapping range. Sean, you were about to say something. Probably you're baffled here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a little baffled. So I'm trying to have an open mind and watch it and see, but this doesn't look like a keto. I, I, I mean, that little, that last that piece is, is does, it? but again, his his Yuki is so cooperative. I, I agree with the criticism that I'm not sure this is pressure tested because you're not, you're not starting the Yuki in a position and saying, all right, you can go from this position, mm -hmm. this should probabilistically get us here, but if you can keep me from doing it, go ahead and keep me from doing right. it. That's pressure testing. Nobody here is saying anything about the skill of this person, because I have no idea who he is. He may be a, a amazing mm -hmm. martial artist fighter, and apparently he's a bouncer and w whatever else, and mm -hmm. he may be super skilled, but I'm, it's not being demonstrated here that there's any pressure testing going on. And this may actually even be great technique. Mm -hmm. I, th I think based on my experience, it's probably not, but, um, <laughs> but he's not giving us any evidence. And so the, if, if you're gonna call it pressure testing, I would like to see pressure testing. Sure. And if, if the title of the thing was, I'm gonna show you some 
a keto technique that works really cool and then he shows the technique, then you know that would be something. But there, there, there is no pressure testing here. If somebody doesn't have any training, I think this would absolutely work. I can right. easily imagine somebody in a bar who's had their right. third IPA <laughs> and says whatever to the wrong person, and then all of a sudden he's standing there and he can do almost anything. But completely sober college wrestler, mm. I don't think he's doing any of this. Yeah, I, I would have no doubt that if, if this guy said, I've done this 30 times in the bar against mm. you know rowdy patrons, that, that it would be true and he probably could pull it off for sure. But I, I don't want to use something that only, that, well, where's through. the category of humans that this works again? Oh, well, they have to have just one more beer than they should have. <laughs> <laughs> they can never have trained before, and they have to be concentrating. If it's a guy, generally, they're going to be concentrating on the girl they're trying to pick up. I mean, they, right. so I don't want to have a set of techniques that works for that. In the United States, mm-hmm. by far, the highest trained combat art is going to be scholastic wrestling Mm. you don't need to train for even the person who was got first second or third at the state level tournament Mm -hmm. you could just train for your average high school varsity wrestler and if you could do it to them you can do it to everybody else but if i can't do it to them Mm -hmm. and that's a pretty dominant slice of the combat sport trained people who live in north america Mm -hmm. I would say, well, that should be the minimum level. Right. I should be able to execute right. on someone who has enough training. They know how their base works. They know how to attach themselves. Maybe they know how to turn it into a connection to your body and take right. your base away from you. If you don't have skills that can address that, I'm not interested. That's not the question I'm trying you know, to why, answer. Why would you train that? Yeah. Right. You know. well, my, my take on it is I'm skeptical. Mm-hmm. And so if I train something, I need to know that it works. If I'm training techniques that I can't test because they're too dangerous, poking you in the mm-hmm. eyes or smashing your groin or, mm-hmm. or stabbing you with a knife or whatever, those techniques may work, they may not work, but I won't know. I'm not gonna spend my time training things that I can't prove that they work. I train jujitsu because I can prove that it works and I can do it in a safe environment where nobody's gonna get hurt. When I do cross side top and hold somebody down, I know I can do it. I know I can do it against all sorts of people because I've tested it thousands and thousands of times and got thousands of hours of time doing it. I don't know that I can eye jab somebody in in the eyeballs effectively when I need to do it because I haven't tested it. I would just leave it at that. And so I'm gonna spend my time training and doing things that I can test and I can know without a shadow of a doubt because I've got really conclusive evidence based on thousands and thousands of experiments that it works. The argument that, well, when work on the street because you're on concrete or not a mat or if you put in a, a knife, then it doesn't work. We train all of that. If I can control a hand that grips a knife, then I can probably assume that I can control your body. If I can hold you down on a soft mat, I probably can hold you down on concrete. Uh, there's not much gonna, that's, that's gonna change those scenarios. Mm-hmm. And so if I allow you to punch at my groin or stab at my eyeballs while we train, I can train that. And, and um, Chris Hatter, our coach's coach, he talked to us a little bit about, well, how do you train that stuff in your everyday jujitsu training? And it was, his response was really pretty nice. And he said, well, you can have a jujitsu role with somebody and you can, you can use your imagination. And I do this all the time. And so I'm in a position and we're grappling and I, and I just think, can this person hit me here? If the answer is yes, then I move my body and, and tie them up in a way and I ask the question again, can they hit me here? And the answer is no and I've just trained self-defense. Or I've got somebody's back and I'm attempting to choke them and I think, can they poke me in the eyes here? And the answer is yes. And then I turn my head and tuck and I ask the question again, can they do that? And the answer is no, and I've just trained Mm self-defense. And so sometimes just those little things that we can do, then I've just worked self-defense. I can do all of that self-defense work right within my jujitsu work with a partner pretty easily, just with a little bit of imagination. And what's great about that for me is then I'm, I'm creating an experiment where I can tell that what I'm doing for self-defense works, rather than doing something where I say, well, I can't train that because it's too dangerous and I don't know. So, so Coach Kane gave you this 
beautiful heuristic analytic answer. Uh-huh. I'll give you I'll give you a, a very short logical <laughs> yes, answer. Yes, please. And the paradox mm-hmm. it, 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 you'll see it is mm-hmm. that if you think that lifting the rules off of a competition would allow you to beat me mm-hmm. when you can't beat me when I have rules in place, you have just entered into a logical fallacy. The yes. rules are therefore to protect you from, yeah right <laughs> protect you from me <laughs> right yes yeah yeah if i can be the person on top whenever i really want to be the person on top mm. if you take the rules out of the scenario it will be a much longer day than an hour of me being the top player mm-hmm. in, in terms of that bridge in jiu-jitsu like the south defense bridge it's such a short bridge like you just a few things and that's it and and, and i like what, what the the, the word just at, using a little bit of imagination. Because here in these training methods that I see, it takes a lot of imagination. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I can imagine if this happens, and if this happens, and if this happens, then it would work. And that's like, it's a lot of fillers there mm-hmm. <laughs> between what we do and what would be self-defense. So. Yes, mm-hmm. right.